You are listening to an American Free Press podcast. Joining me on the line is Minister Stephen A. Brigham. Minister, thanks for joining us today. Well, thanks, Dave. Yeah, thanks for uh, letting me be on the show. Can I refer to you as Minister Stephen or Steve or Stephen? How would you like that? Yeah, Dave, uh, Steve is fine. Okay, Steve, thanks. Now, you are actually sailing. You are in the process of rafting, actually, all the way from New Jersey to Key West. And I want to get into that in great detail in a moment. But before we do, for the benefit of the listeners, can you give them a little bit of background about who you are? Well, I've uh, had a mission of helping out the homeless of Ocean County for the last 14 years. Part of that time, I was working at a regular job, working for a high-voltage electrical contractor, doing uh, mostly port authority work, and then coming home in the evenings and doing what I could to help out the homeless, bringing them propane for their heater during the winter time, and bringing them camping gear, tents and sleeping bags and cooking gear, whatever I could find and whatever I could think of to make their lives a little bit better in their situation. That's what I've been doing for the last 14 years. Last seven years, I developed a place called Kent City in Lakewood, where on an average about 80 homeless people, men and women, were living there in a community for about seven years. Okay, and what happened at Tent City, Steve? Well, it existed quite well for the seven years, except for the township of Lakewood. Well, the powers that be, I believe also the county had something to do with trying to make our life difficult, trying to do away with Tent City. And again, there is no homeless shelter in the county of Ocean, so there was no place for these people to go within the county. But the powers that be, it didn't seem to matter to them. They just wanted to rid the county of the homeless, pass it on to Atlantic County that has a shelter in Atlantic City, and not live up to their responsibility to address everybody within the community, the poor also. Okay, and in fact, your design of sheltering and housing the homeless actually was much more cost-effective than theirs, wasn't it? Extremely, extremely. Again, the county, the government can save a great deal of money by developing a little community type shelter system where there's small housing for the homeless that's sustainable and it's perpetual. And what they're doing right now is putting people in hotels in places like Seaside and up and down the Ocean County shore. And it's cost an arm and a leg. It's about $1,500 a month for just a hotel room. That's not including food and other necessities. That's just a hotel room. So if we develop a housing unit for the homeless that would cost about $8,000 for the one unit to build and put that in a community setting, again, that's a one-time cost and would save the, save the county and the taxpayers a load of money, millions of dollars over just a couple of years. Hmm, amazing. I've been down to Tent City and reported on it, and thank you for being a wonderful host there and showing me and uh, other folks around, Steve. Well, thank you, Dave, for coming down and showing an interest in this subject. Mm -hmm. Now, let's talk about what you're doing now, because this is something really interesting that I learned a lot, that you could actually take what are called these intercoastal waterways all the way from New Jersey, where you brought me there, that one spot in New Jersey, all the way to Key West. Now, why don't you explain to the listeners what exactly that means, what exactly you're doing, and why you're doing it? Yeah, Dave, it's been a learning experience for myself also. I recently came to the knowledge that the intracoastal waterways of the east coast of America start right here. They start at the Manasquan River on the east coast of New Jersey, and they start there and they go all the way to Key West, Florida. You can go from this point at the Manasquan River all the way to Key West, Florida, on water without going out into the ocean. It's inland waterways that are protected all the way from here to Key West, Florida. And how are you traversing these waterways? Well, you know, Dave, I've been thinking about this idea for quite a while and trying to think of the type of watercraft that I would use. And I've been thinking about the issue of the homeless in Ocean County and just that the powers that be, the politicians are trying to chase them out of any area where they find them. In fact, they've outlawed homelessness in Lakewood. They made it a crime in Lakewood, New Jersey, to be homeless. If they find you homeless in Lakewood, they can arrest you and put you in jail. It's absurd that our country has come to this, where it can be illegal to be poor. 
and homeless in America. Mm-hmm. So uh, what they're doing and what they've done is they're just chasing the homeless everywhere. So I'm, I'm trying to think of an idea. Where would the homeless be safe? Where is there a safe haven for the homeless? And I thought about the waterway. If we develop housing on the water, this way the homeless would be mobile, mobile, and they could move up and down the waterway. They could stay in one place or they could move down if they're not welcomed, if they don't like that area, it's not good for them economically or whatever. They can relocate. They can move their craft down the waterway. So, you know, I thought that might be a solution. So this kind of was birthed out of that idea. What would it be like to live on the water? So I developed a raft, a raft that's eight foot wide by 16 feet long. And I've got a nice canvas tent that's about nine foot by seven foot that I'm going to put on that raft at nighttime. Then I'll take it down in the morning and during the day I'll sail. I put a sail, I put a mast and a jib. So it's got a main sail and a jib on this raft. And I can sail during the daytime and then at nighttime take down the main sail, put the boom off to the side and set up this tent and sleep on this during the night and then again take it down during the day in the morning and then sail again. And what's so again, a jib, Steve? A jib is the front sail. It comes off of the mast, the main aluminum beam that goes up to almost the center of the boat. And this jib sail is a cable that goes from the mast down to the front of the boat. So it's another sail. You've got the main sail okay. and the jib sail. Okay. So there's two purposes to this whole trip. And one is to see what it would be like to live on the water. During the colder months, I'll be gone. Hopefully, we'll be traveling through the rest of October and through November. So I'll have a taste of what it would be like to live on the water during cold months, the negatives and the positives to living on the water. Then again, also trying to bring attention to the issue of homelessness for the Hoshi County homeless, but also for the nationwide homeless. This is an issue that the nation is dealing with right now. We have a high cost of living in this country, and a lot of times the minimum wage is not enough for a single individual to afford a place to live. Most of the time it's not across America. So we have an economic discrimination, a class discrimination going on. We're discriminating against the poor of our society. Yeah, I'm sure. There's millions of people across this country who would absolutely agree with that, and it's getting worse by the day, it seems. So this raft is completely flat then, Steve? It is. It's completely flat, and it has an area a little bit forward of center for the mast, which can be taken down and set up during the trip. But yeah, it's completely flat. You know, it's unlike any other craft out there conventional craft. It's more like a Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn type of arrangement. These intercoastal waterways, do they get rough sometimes? They can. They can get very rough, depending on the size of the waterway, how big it is. If you're in the Chesapeake Bay or even the Bonnegat Bay here, the waters, depending on the wind and the direction of the wind, can get extremely rough. Mm -hmm. So you left out of Manasquan there. Was that in Point Pleasant itself? It was, yes. Well, we tested it in the Manasquan. There's a little waterway connected to the Manasquan Inlet at the southern end of the Manasquan Inlet, a little uh, cove area. We launched in there and tested the craft in there for a little bit. And then we decided to launch really on the bayhead side of the bridge there that connects Point Pleasant to Bayhead. And so we launched at the end of the canal, right at the tail end of the canal with the, con- the Manasquan Canal empties in to the Bonnegat Bay. There's a little beachhead there, and we we decided to launch from there. Okay. And then you launched yesterday. This was Tuesday, the 21st? And so we launched Monday, and we came over to Bricktown uh, across the bay. Right at the end of Princeton Avenue, there's two sweet ladies that I've known for years that have been supportive of the homeless, and they have a place right on the water, a little cove at the end of Princeton Avenue. Right across the street is the Bonnegat Bay. And these sweet ladies let me use their dock to dock the raft so it would be easy to load up the rest of our material. We couldn't do that from the beachhead that we launched from. And so what happened, it worked out very well because this storm, this nor'easter, just blew in and has kept us pinned down for two days here, which is fine because we needed a little more prepping, a little more time to get ready. 
And so it was really a blessing that it happened this way. And so we're planning on leaving out Friday morning. We're going to stay one more day because the weather is going to be wet again tomorrow morning. And so we're going to, again, make sure that we've got everything in order before we set sail. And so Friday morning, bright and early, we're lifting our sails and we're heading south. And where's the first stop? Well, I believe it's going to be Tuckerton. There's a nice maritime museum there, a reconstructed lighthouse. Back in, I believe, the 1940s, there was a lighthouse somewhere on the Atlantic near Tuckerton that washed into the sea. It finally gave way to the sea and it washed away. And they rebuilt it in Tuckerton and made a maritime museum. So I've never seen that. I just found out about it. And we're going to sail down there, and that'll be our first stop. Again, it's about the cause, it's about bringing awareness to the issue of homelessness, but it's also about having a good time, too, enjoying nature, enjoying the beauty of the waterway, and also seeing things that I've never seen before. Our second stop will probably be the Liberty Bell in Philadelphia. We'll go down to Cape May, round the bend, go up to Delaware, and then park the boat right outside of Philadelphia and walk to the Liberty Bell. Again, this is about our American liberties, our American rights and freedoms, which seem to be taken away from us, leached away from us slowly but surely. Again, we're standing up for it. You know, we've got certain rights that were given us by our founding fathers and penned and established in our Constitution. And again, we believe that every American has a right to be able to earn a living wage, earn enough to survive on. And that seems to be in jeopardy right now. Yeah, absolutely. The raft is obviously completely flat, and there's really nowhere to store anything, I guess. So what are you carrying on board, and what do you eat? Well, again, it's a work in progress. It's an adventure. It's a learning process. And some of the things that we'll be taking, of course, will be sleeping bags, zero-rated sleeping bag in case it gets real cold, the tent that we're sitting in, just some of the day-to-day -day necessity things like cooking equipment, pots and pans, things that everybody would need on a daily basis to survive. And what we hope to do is be almost entirely sustainable on the waterway. Fishing, we've got a clamming license so we can clam and have a lot of clam chowder and boiled clams or steam clammed. And again, trying to catch fish, maybe flounder or you know, whatever we can catch as sustainable as possible by the waterway. Okay. Now, of course, you've been homeless for many years, so really this isn't much of a bother to you, actually, to be where you're at because you were doing the same thing on land, but you're doing basically the same thing on water, right? Well, I'd like to think so, Dave, but again, this is a new experience. I really haven't spent a lot of time on the water. I've lived in Ocean County most of my life, just eight miles from the ocean most of my life. I really haven't spent a lot of time on the water. And so, again, this is going to be something new to me. And so I'm hoping that I have enough learned, enough survival skills, or I've toughened myself up by living in Tent City, living in a tent during the wintertime. I'm hoping that I've toughened myself up enough where I can deal with whatever comes my way on the waterway. How long before you reach Key West? Well, I'm hoping quite soon <laughs> because I'm hoping to find some warm weather sooner than later. I'm anticipating about two months to make it down to uh, Key West. Okay. How fast does this craft usually travel? I know it depends on the actual current and everything, but did you look into that? Well, I would say on an average, this time of year, the wind comes out of the northwest. That's why we have colder winters, because the wind direction changes during the wintertime. Typically, the prevailing winds during summertime are southerly. They come out of the south, uh, southeast, southwest, and then they change during the fall, and they shift from coming out of the northwest, west-northwest, typically. And that's good for sailing. That's good for sailing south, at least. And so, you know, this is what I'm depending on. And this is why I've chose this time of year to do it. Also, you know, to show, hopefully make an impact, a mental impact on people's minds that there's going to be hundreds and thousands of Americans sleeping outside this winter because they can't afford a place to live at the salary that they might be making. 
right. or at the hourly wage. So, yeah, this time of year, you know, is chosen because of the impact that it will have on my sailing craft, the ability to sail south at a good clip, probably averaging at about 10 miles an hour, the wind, averaging at about 100 miles a day, hopefully. There'll be many days where we won't be able to sail because of weather or high winds or for one reason or another stopping to address people within the area and the community. Mm-hmm. So uh, there's a couple of variables. Do you know if this has ever been done before, Steve? It's been done many a time on conventional crafts, conventional sailing crafts or motor crafts. But this is the first time that I have ever heard of that somebody is going down on a raft and living on a raft all the way from New Jersey down to Florida. Wow. Any media coverage, Steve, besides, of course, what we're doing here? You know, Dave, I had reached out to a few media contacts that I had made from Tent City, and I contacted one fellow from RTV, which is Russian television. And first, you know, he said he was too busy, wouldn't be interested, but thanked me for contacting him. And then he called me back and he said, you know, Minister Steve, I talked to the people in Moscow, and they seem to be interested in the idea. And he says, I'm going to come up and I'm going to sail with you from New Jersey to Washington, D.C. That's where he's based. So just the other day, he came up. He came up Monday, the day that we launched, and he took a look at the craft, and you could see the worry all over his face. (laughs) (laughs) He didn't know what he was getting into. But he's gotten used to the idea. He's been staying with us for the last few days. He's been filming us, been filming the preliminary emotions going into this and the preparing of the craft. He's getting into it, and I guess he's feeling more comfortable now. So there'll be three of us on the craft sailing south and three of us up to at least D.C. if everything goes well. Mm -hmm. And then after you hit Key West in about two months, you're going to head back, same way you came? Well, I think we'll enjoy some of the warm weather, maybe for a little while at least. So again, you know, this is all up in the air. There's no deadlines. There's really no certain agenda that we've got to be in a certain place at a certain time. So we've got some leeway here. And so we're going to, again, if we feel comfortable, we don't feel a desperate need to get back to this area, we might just hang out in Key West for a while. Uh, it sounds like a plan to me, Steve. Uh, desperate to get back to Jersey? Uh, nah. <laughs> So we'll see how things go, Then We'll play it by ear. And again, you know, I feel a need, again, to address the issues of New Jersey, issues of Ocean County, seeing some of the disparity going on, seeing some of really the pandering of politicians to unethical and un-American and unconstitutional agendas at the expense of the American people, the expense of the American Constitution. Seeing these things go on in front of me, myself, you know, being a many generations American, it upsets me to the core. I know I'm very aggravated and upset with the type of things that are going on in the political arena at this time in New Jersey and other places in America. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up, Steve, before we close out the interview. Can you explain to the listeners about your lineage, about your ancestors? Well, I'm a 12th generation American, having an extremely well-documented family history. Brigham's got together at the first World Fair back in the 1880s in Chicago, and they enlisted one of the Brigham's, uh, Stuart Brigham, to write the family history, and he did a tremendous job, wrote a 400-page volume on all the Brigham's, starting with Thomas Brigham, who came from England on a ship called the Susan back in 1635, and he settled in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And then the family history is recorded in detail with almost every Brigham. I can tell you the name of every ancestor, every forefather of mine, back to 1635. Not only can I tell you the name, but what they did in some of the exploits, the bigger exploits of their life. Wow. So, you know, a tremendous gold nugget here of, of family history and its tie to the American history. 117 Brigham's fought in the Revolutionary War, of course, on the side of the Patriots against the British. And so what their exploits were during the war, tremendous heritage here, American heritage. That's probably one of the best recorded family histories in America. Wow. Just, you know, again, 
blind the listeners to understand that we've got to stand up for the American Constitution and the ethics that are involved in the penning of this great Constitution. And we've got politicians that are selling out the American ethics for their own political gain. It's a crime against patriots. It's a crime against the blood that was spilled to secure a better country, a better Constitution. And so I think for their sake and for our sake, We've got to tell the politicians that want to sell our rights and our good ethics. They want to sell them for their own political gain. We've got to stand up and tell them we won't tolerate that. We want fairness for the American people. We want a level playing field for the American people. We deserve it because we have sacrificed and our forefathers have sacrificed for the greatest nation on earth. You're absolutely right. And is there any way for listeners to stay on top of your location and where exactly you are, where are you going to be? Yeah, they can look for my Facebook page, which is Stephen A. Brigham. They can find me there, and then they can follow the trip by liking a Facebook page called Seeking Sustainability. And we'll be posting on that page continually, day by day. So if they like that page, they can follow us along the waterway on our journey. Great. Minister Stephen A. Brigham, a great American. I have the distinct honor and privilege of knowing you, of getting to meet you and hang out with you several times. And Sarah, I wish you the best here and looking forward to talking to you real soon. Well, thank you, Dave. Thank you for having me on the show. And thank you for being concerned about the American people.